We spent the last 20 years building institutions. Let's look again at clients. What are their financial needs? And where can we add value to the ways in which they manage their money? So it's time to uh, become much more sophisticated in our understanding of, of people and their financial lives. The majority are still farmers, but there's 350 million who are um, day laborers. You know, so you end up finding classes of individuals that microcredit as it's designed isn't necessarily aimed at serving. It does turn out though that a lot of microcredit organizations as, they've, as they have grown have taken on lots of these kinds of people, but we don't talk about it very much because they don't fit the narrative. By understanding, first of all, that they exist, by counting them and calling out more explicitly that they are viable segments of the poor, I think it may help us start to design products that more carefully fit the way they earn money and their financial goals. We still assume universal financial desires and goals. Virtually every family is trying to educate its kids, be prepared for a health shock, um, old age, put a roof over your head, maybe invest in an income generating activity. That's pretty universal. But the way in which people earn money and their cash flows in a household actually are fairly variable according to the way they, the, the way they generate income. So it seemed to us at first blush that in terms of eventual product design, you might design some fairly different kinds of products for fairly different sorts of cash flows more than for different financial objectives. So if a farmer is going to buy a cow, when that represents two years annual income, they need a different kind of loan than they're getting with microcredit. And so you, so you have to be aware of that on the margin and say, okay, for buying cows, you need a product. And so, so it's, it's understanding the difference between general finance which is applicable to most families all the time, and specific kinds of finance that certain sorts of families need at certain moments to accomplish a financial goal that's very important. The challenge with all microfinance is cost and information, and that's what we addressed with credit most successfully some years ago, but you also have a revenue model associated with credit that helps a lot. Um, savings has been tough because the economics are tougher. Information is not so much of a problem, but, but economics are tougher because the transaction size is so much smaller. Most people don't have so much to save each time they might have a little extra money. And so in relation to the cost of standing at a teller window, which is about a dollar in any bank around the world, the amounts they're saving is just not sufficient to warrant the bank wanting those people in line or for them to spend a dollar of their own money getting to the bank to stay in the line to deposit a dollar or two or five. So the basic problem with savings is it's too expensive for both clients and institutions alike for most passbook deposits, sort of site deposits that you're transacting a lot. Um, therefore, savings has just not been tried much for poorer people. Um, there are two ways to think about this. There's a big opportunity to work harder on savings that is associated with loans. So for instance, when someone makes a loan payment, doing a savings top up, so that in the same transaction, without a great additional cost, you can capture deposits. There's not nearly enough work been done on that, and I think we can do a lot more. And also taking advantage of agent banking, mobile money, and other delivery channels that drive the cost down from a dollar at a teller window today, I think to less than 10 cents on a dollar which would dramatically change the, uh, the cost structure of making deposits and make saving services much more viable for poorer people than ever before. I think you have to have a little patience, right? Um, I, I think that people are, they're over-interpreting M-Pesa because um, it's just one example and it's an example of a, of a money transfer system. And I believe you're going to end up with a number of money transfer systems but, but no, not too many people sat around at the beginning of the creation of M-Pesa and said they were creating an alternative banking system. That wasn't the objective, it never was. And so, you know, you have to get these infrastructures built and then 
hope uh, or encourage creativity in their use by a variety of players. And so what I would hope to see in Kenya over the next five years is a bunch of different financial companies figuring out ways in which to use this transactional platform to provide access to financial services, something I don't expect from Safaricom or, or even an equity bank that's you know, trying to do its own thing. You know, I think what you'll find is probably innovation from much smaller players who aren't so heavily capitalized, who are just going to try and get up on those rails. And you'll get several of these mobile money kinds of transactional systems built, I think, over the next uh, oh, five, six years. And then you know, watch and see or encourage different experimentation to see where you can get to. I think what you'll see is a world in which there's much, much greater specialization along the value chain of the delivery of financial services and many, many more partnerships, each one chipping in there a little bit along the way. So, uh, yeah. And, and you're going to see far more things fail than succeed, uh, you know, until we get there. And there'll be big failures because they're big investments. Unlike microcredit, which was never a big investment, you, you, you know, you, anybody could put together a few loans and call it microcredit. You know, these systems will be, you know, they require tens of millions of dollars of investment, each one, and um, most probably won't succeed. We have had this narrative for the last 10 years, maybe, that it is about poverty alleviation, and it presupposes uh, income generating activities that are financed by a loan from which income is derived and people pull themselves out of poverty, which I think misses the most profound impact of financial services even in our own lives. I mean, our own, you know, finance in our own lives is not about earning more money. It's about administering our, our life goals and, and, and educating ourselves, educating our kids, doing all the things that are most important to us that are far more efficiently organized by good financial services. And you could make a case that, that the impact of finance is in the fact that your kid doesn't die because you took him right away to the hospital because he had money to take him to the hospital and didn't have to sell a sheep to get money to go to the hospital, a decision you would wait several days to make until you were sh really sure the kid was sick. And by the time you get the, s the sheep sh sold, <laughs> you know, and you get to the hospital, the kid's really sick, you know. And so all those ways are probably far more important in terms of the role of finance in people's lives than we've ever included in our narrative. But they're harder to describe. They're not as simple. And we have struggled for 10 or 15 years to create an alternative narrative. And we've fallen back on the skyhook approach to poverty represented by microcredit because it's just easier. It seems more motivating for fundraising. And it becomes a self-limiting um, feature of our work because it means we deny the existence of all sorts of other clients in our portfolios. We don't measure them. We don't try and serve them specifically. It means that we're reluctant to try new kinds of products that may not fit that narrative. And now I think it's causing us some reputational risk because we have been viewed sort of unidimensionally in terms of delivering a result that probably was never the result that we should have been so mobilized against. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways in which the, the narrative is limiting us. Because I think that's the thing that gets lost in all this. It's just a common sense of, please, you know, all of us, imagine life without financial services. How would you do anything?